Hello, my name is Karen. I am a Stanford Aero Astro PhD student working with Professor Marco Pavoni from the Stanford Autonomous Systems Lab. This work was done in collaboration with Nico Sarchiga from Toyota Research Institute. In a nutshell, we have developed a technique that allows us to backpropagate through signal temporal logic specifications and therefore create a computational bridge between temporal logics and gradient based methods because they are now expressed in the same computational language. As autonomous systems are going to operate in the real world and interact with humans, there's going to be some kind of structure or rules that govern how these systems should or should not behave. For instance, there are road rules that govern how cars on the road should interact with each other. Hence, the goal of this work is to create a framework that allows us to leverage this logical structure to improve the performance of the different elements that make up the autonomy stack. And so on the one hand, we have these rules and task specifications that are human interpretable and in natural language. And on the other hand, a lot of the solution methods that underpin the autonomy stack rely on gradients. Hence the challenge here is to create a unified framework to enable logical reasoning for a wealth of solution methods that rely on gradients. The first step is to translate these rules or task specifications into a form that is readable by a computer. And we approach this using signal temporal logic or STL. So what is STL? Well, it is a logic language that provides a systematic way to describe spatial and temporal properties of a signal where a signal is a real value time series, such as the position of a robot as it moves through space and time. At the bottom here is the grammar used to describe the STL language, and these operators can be applied on top of each other to create a more complex formula, including the ones that we may already be familiar with, such as or, implies, eventually, and always. I want to point out here that STL is defined over predicates, which is the second term in the grammar, which says a function mu of x, where x is the state of the system, should be less than c, a scalar. So if you're familiar with linear temporal logic, or LTL, then this looks very similar, except that STL is defined over predicates instead of atomic propositions, and that the temporal operators have an associated time interval to it. What is really unique about STL is that it is equipped with the notion of robustness, which measures how much a signal satisfies or violates an STL formula. So let's take a look at a simple example. Here we have an STL specification phi that says always stay below the speed limit. And so for the speed profile on the bottom left, it is below the speed limit, and so the robustness value will be positive the magnitude of the robustness value will correspond to how much it is below the speed limit. And now for these other two speed profiles on the, on the right here, they both exceed the speed limit, and so they will both have a negative robustness value. However, notice that the speed profile on the right violates the speed limit even more, and so this will have a larger negative robustness value than the speed profile in the middle. What you see on the slide are the quantitative semantics of STL, which essentially provides a systematic way to compute the robustness value of any STL specification. A little bit on notation, rho here denotes the robustness value, and this is a function of both the signal at starting at time t and the STL specification of interest. So let's take a look at a few of these equations to get a better intuition of what robustness is. Looking at the predicate, mu of x less than c, the corresponding robustness formula just measures how much smaller mu of x is compared to c. And so a positive value here means that the predicate is satisfied, while a negative value here means that the predicate was uh, violated. Looking at the AND operation, since we want both phi and psi to be true, we want to see which is the least true. And this corresponds to looking at the minimum between the robustness value of phi and the robustness value of psi. Looking at the eventually operator, um, 
The eventually operator specifies that the formula phi should be true at least once between the time interval a, b. And so naturally, this corresponds to finding the maximum robustness value of phi over the time interval a, b. As I mentioned a few slides ago, constructing an STL specification involves composing a lot of these operations on top of each other. And therefore, for an arbitrarily complex STL specification, you can quickly see that the corresponding robustness formula will be composed of a lot of nested max and mins, um, both in space and also in time. Equipped with the quantitative semantics, we can start to think about how changes in the input signal will affect the robustness value, and hence start to think about gradients. Hence, what we do in this work is to translate these STL robustness formulas into computation graphs so that we can backpropagate through them to obtain gradients. And this is made possible by leveraging highly optimized auto differentiation tools, which are readily available to us thanks to the machine learning community. And so the challenge here is then to compute the corresponding computation graph for a given STL specification. We do this by leveraging the syntactical structure of a specification. So there is an order in which the um, operations are applied, and hence we can then back out the syntax tree where the root of this tree corresponds to the outermost or the last STL operation that was applied, and the leaves of this tree corresponds to the predicates for which the specification is built on. We can then flip the arrows around to get a graph structure, which dictates how the robustness values should be flowing from operation to operation in order to compute the overall robustness value. And so the idea we have in this work is that if we can compute the, uh, the computation graph for each robustness formula um, corresponding to each STL operation, then we can stack these components in a way that is dictated by this directed acyclic graph structure. However, since there are temporal operators that are, in, um, that are involved, we actually need to be passing what we call a robustness trace through this graph structure. And so a robustness trace is defined as a sequence of robustness values corresponding to each consecutive subsignal. So I've eased the notation compared to what I showed a couple of slides ago, but the subscript of rho here corresponds to the time index for which the signal starts, kind of, kind of illustrated on the bottom right here. Looking at the quantitative semantics that I showed a few slides earlier, a lot of the robustness formulas are pretty straightforward. The tricky part, however, is dealing with the temporal operators. And I'll go into the construction of the eventually operator in the next slide, um, but the other temporal operators are very similar, and the details can be found in the paper. So what we have here is the eventually operator being applied to a formula phi, and the corresponding robustness formula is shown on the right. For simplicity, let's assume that the time interval AB encompasses the entire length of the signal, and so this is why we have a zero to infinity on the left. And essentially what we want to do is compute the maximum robustness value of phi over the entire signal. So what I'm going to show you next is very similar to a recurrent neural network. The structure is the same, but rather than having a neural network inside the recurrent cell, it will just be a max operation. But there will be still the notion of an input state, a hidden state, and also an output state. At the bottom, we have the robustness trace of phi passed in backwards in time. Then we also initialize the hidden state h0 to equal rho t. And then the output state, ot, will just be the maximum between h0 and rho t. And then we update the hidden state to equal the previous output state. And then we repeat this process at the next time step. And so at the next time step, we take the max between h1 and rho t minus 1 to get the next output. 
and then we repeat this until we reach the end of the robustness trace. And essentially, we are performing dynamic programming because H, the hidden state H, is keeping track of the maximum robustness value it has seen so far. And so by the end of the um, length of the signal, O0 will spit out the maximum robustness value of 5. And this then corresponds to the robustness value of eventually 5. And so when we collect all the outputs together, this is actually the robustness trace of eventually 5. And then this robustness trace can be passed on to the next op STL operation, um, depending on the STL specification we are interested in. And so for this case that I've just shown you is relatively straightforward. But when the time interval is finite, and so when the B in the time interval AB is less than infinity, then things will look a little different, but it just amounts to changing how we define the hidden state. Um, so this might seem a little excessive, but by doing this uh, approach, it makes it very straightforward to just compose multiple temporal operators one after the other. The method of translating an STL robustness formula into a computation graph is what we call STLCG. And essentially, STLCG expresses temporal logics in the same computational language as deep learning. And what makes STLCG particularly powerful is that it can leverage existing auto differentiation tools like PyTorch and TensorFlow, and therefore creating a computational bridge between um, temporal logics and deep learning. So what I will show next are a couple of small examples just to demonstrate how STLCG can be used within gradient-based methods, such as when training neural networks. First example, motion planning. Imagine a robot that is monitoring a farm and it needs to survey certain paddocks while avoiding other regions and still need to reach a goal destination. And so here we have a robot on the bottom left. Um, suppose it needs to visit the cows for five time steps before reaching the goal destination and also avoiding the blue circle. We could have another STL specification that um, requires the robot to visit the sheep for five time steps, um, avoid the green paddock with the cows and avoid the blue circle, but also reach the goal destination. Um, this robot could also have control constraints and we can also represent these constraints as an STL specification. And so we can frame the following problem as an unconstrained optimization problem. We have a term that um, makes sure that the robot satisfies the dynamics and state constraints. Another term to make sure that the robot satisfies the STL specification. And then another term corresponding to the control constraints. And then we can apply very vanilla gradient descent um, on this unconstrained optimization problem. And then very quickly, it converges to a solution shown on the left. Um, and so this example just shows that STLCG is very flexible. It assumes very little on the problem and could potentially be applied to settings with more challenging dynamics. Our second example is parametric STL, which is the problem of finding parameters of an STL specification that best fit or best describe a given signal. You can think of this as a form of logic-based feature extraction on time series data. PSTL is an interesting problem because we can then perform clustering on the extracted parameter space to help group signals that share similar spatial and temporal properties. We use this application to demonstrate the computational advantages of STLCG. Since STLCG leverages existing state-of-the-art auto differentiation tools, we have access to the existing software infrastructure, such as the ability to batch the inputs and also GPU utilization. And so this plot here compares the computation time for different PSTL problems of different sizes. And this is in comparison to an existing approach that uses binary search, which is a naturally sequential problem. 
As you can see, the computation time of STLCG shown in blue and green is much lower than the binary search approach. And with GPU utilization, the computation time is near constant aside from some initial overhead. Our third and final example demonstrates how STLCG can be used to regularize neural network models. And so the example we have here is a sequence to sequence prediction task. So suppose we are given the green trajectory. We want to predict what the future trajectory shown in blue is going to look like. And so we can just use a recurrent neural network to perform this sequence to sequence prediction task. Now suppose that you know ahead of time, um, maybe based on domain knowledge, that this trajectory in the future will end up between the dotted lines. Unfortunately, the data set we have is unable to capture this behavior. And so if we just train on minimizing the mean squared error between what the model produces and the training data, we will only be able to accurately predict the blue trajectories but will be unable to achieve the long-term desired behavior. However, by adding an STL robustness term to the loss function um, and also extending the prediction horizon, we are now able to predict what the future trajectory is going to look like and still achieve the desired long-term behavior despite only having access to data on a short horizon. And so this is presenting a really interesting idea on how we can use STLCG to provide some logical structure to neural networks, which are otherwise dense, opaque, and difficult to interpret. In summary, we have presented STLCG, a technique that leverages highly optimized order differentiation tools to represent STL robustness formulas on computation graphs so that we can backpropagate through them to obtain gradients. Our work has provided the groundwork for a lot of interesting future research directions, um, such as applying STLCG to more complex and diverse learning-based methods, such as in the context of human behavior prediction, um, neural network controllers, and also adding log logical structure in latent variable models. You can find all the code on our GitHub, um, shown at the bottom here, and thank you for your attention.